to a review of Bronson here. He is a French Bulldog Boston Terrier Cross that is a little asshole. Say hi to them, Bronson. All right, now go away. Really, we're here to talk about something a little different, uh, well, different from him. But before we get into it, make sure you're following me on Instagram, at MadMaxGuns. Um, if you'd like to support me some more, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash MadMaxGuns. Uh, I really haven't been posting too much on there recently, just because I don't really have too many, or if any, followers at this point. But um, check that out. More followers, or Patreons, I guess, I get. The more content I will put out there, and it's stuff that you won't be able to see anywhere else. And you'll get these videos uh, a day or two early. And lastly, check out the link in the description below for Big Daddy Unlimited. If you're into buying gun parts, it will definitely help you out. It is like an online superstore where it's beyond a paywall so they can have everything well below map pricing. So if you're into buying gun parts a lot or if you're what ammo, guns, whatever, it's for you. If you're not, then not. But it's about $0.99 cents for the first month and then every month after that, I think it's like 4 or $5 dollars as a membership fee. And if you're buying a lot of gun parts, you'll make your money back almost instantly. Um, yeah, they decided to help me out on the channel. So now that that's over, let's get into what we're going to be talking about today. As you probably saw in the intro to the video and the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about the Tract Optics Toric Low Power Variable Optic 1 to 8. This specific model is in the MRAD. Um, SCAR 17. Um, yeah, this is a testing rifle. It's sitting in a um, American Defense Manufacturing Mount Delta C. C is for cantilever. Um, I bought the C model on accident. Um, the Delta mount was designed specifically for SCARS to help out with its uh, eye munch optics problem. Uh, that being said, I've had a lot of different optics on this and a lot of rounds through it, and the only thing that's ever broke was a Holosun red dot mount. No optics have been killed during the production of this video. But with all that out of the way, if you got any questions about the scar, I got a bunch of other videos on it. My opinion on it has changed over the years. But if you got any questions about it, drop in the comments, hit me up in the DMs, what have you. What today we're here to talk about the Toric. If you don't know anything about tracked optics, they're a direct to consumer brand. Um, I've talked about Maven in the past, Arkin in the past, they're along the same lines of that, but in my opinion, higher quality. Uh, they use all shot glass from out there in uh, Germany. Uh, it's not Japanese, I believe these. They are made in Japan, but they use shot glass, which is the bee's knees. Um, but what really led to me getting this optic was they came out with a new app. Um, it's like a ballistic app, but it's designed specifically around their optics, and I figured if I was going to try to use the app, I have to use it with one of their optics, just because how the app works. I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video, and uh, show me, I got a little clip of me out at the range using the app with this out to a little bit of distance, but if you're interested in that, hang around to the end. Um, as you saw in the intro video, most of my shooting with this was done like 120 yards and in which is uh, fine. It was all done on the 1X, which it feels like a true 1X if you're really looking through it. But with all that stuff out of the way, let's dive into the optic. So we'll start on the back here. It's got a quick adjust, um, I believe it's called diopter adjustment. It's to focus the reticle. If you don't know how to do that, you hold it all the way in, close your eyes, Point it up at a nice clear blue sky open and then turn until it focuses and it should be focused to your eye. I usually run them all the way in but everyone's eyes are different and it's going to be up to you to adjust it the right way. Size wise I'm not going to get into like the down and dirty specs of it like height, weight, length, all that stuff. It's an average 30 millimeter tube 
low power variable optic size. Uh, could it be a little lighter, heavier? Sure, but it's not much to make a difference on a 308 semi-automatic rifle. If you're in uh, looking for that information, just do a little Google search. They're shockproof, fogproof, all that per gas purged, all that fun stuff, waterproof. Um, great warranty, uh, lifetime, doesn't matter if you're the buyer, secondhand owner, whatever. But it's one to eight, like I said, and back here, the magnification adjustment is actually very smooth. It's not too tough, it's not too light. It, it's perfect in my eyes, whereas a lot of other optics in the biz have, are either for more times than not it's too much to um too much like it takes a little bit more effort than um desired to work the magnification doesn't come with a um lever doesn't come with a throw lever most optic companies are doing that now but this is a nice easy movement so you're just ba boom or you can you're almost sliding your hand to get it but like I said, takes a perfect amount of effort. We got cap turrets here, which for a low power variable optic, um, I think is what you're looking for because you're not dialing. Well, I'm not dialing um, on a one to eight for distant shots. If you can't hold over with the reticle, then um, don't take the shot, I guess. But you got cap turrets. This is the mill. This is the mill model. You got 0.2 mil adjustments instead of the 0.1 on a typical optic because this is a low power variable optic. It, the MOA model is half MOA adjustments instead of quarter MOA adjustments, which it makes sense for this. The illumination isn't quite daylight bright for the really bright days, um, but it, it's if you have an overcast, it is bright enough. Um, it's not going to work as a red dot. It, it's just not going to, and, and that's fine because it's a low power variable optic. Um, the illumination is what it should be these days, where it, it used to be you, you dialed up from 0 to 10 with no space in between. This has off in between each setting, which I think every illuminated reticle should be these days. It takes a standard 2032 battery, and the glass clarity on this, I, I can't get over how clear it is, but the um, reticle is a standard crosshair with mill hashes or subtensions going down, going left and right, and there's even some on top, and for windage and elevation up, you got five mils out before it goes to a, like a thick line, and then for elevation below, it goes down to ten mils and it is a second focal plane which I've changed my tune on that over probably the past two years if it's under 10 power maybe even if 10 power I don't find the need for it to be first focal plane just because it's good to have like the full reticle view pull everything to the center um, if you're using a regular optic 12 or above, I think second focal plane is a little bit better. I mean, I think first focal plane is better for that. If you don't know about first focal plane versus second focal plane, I did a video on it a little while ago. I mean, shit, it almost might be a year by now, but yeah. When it comes to low power variable optics, this seems to be one of the nicer ones I've ever used. I've used Night Forces, Loopholds, um, Vortex. I've used all the main brands. And this is right up there with all the top quality ones that I've used. And it's just streamlined. There's no f bells and whistles that you don't necessarily need or just extras that kind of get in the way um, with the adjustments or anything like that. It's just set it, forget it, shoot. And it's obviously durable because I've been shooting the piss out of it with this, uh, with, with the scar and haven't had any issues. I don't typically you know really take care I don't baby my uh, my stuff so this gets thrown in the back of the truck and then pull it out shoot it throw it back in the truck and that's the end of it but the optic is priced right about twelve hundred dollars and for that twelve hundred dollars if it wasn't a direct to consumer brand you're 
to get an optic this quality, you're going to be looking more of the $1,600 ish range, maybe even more, because they're cutting out the middleman. You just go onto the website and um, you just go on the website, order, and that's that. They have two other models that I'm very interested in trying out, but uh, the supply chain issues right now isn't helping anything. But they have a, I believe it's a 4 to 20 and a 6 to 30. The 4 to 20 is a 30 millimeter tube. That would be great for, say, this 308 here that I'm going to be doing a video on very soon. And the 6 to 30 is, it's there, they call it the ELR model. The 4 to 20, they call it the PRS model. I would like to use the 6 to 30 if I was to shoot PRS just because when you have higher magnifications like that the glass clarity is super clear when you're using in that like 14 to 20 range where you're going to be taking most of your shots in a PRS match or any sort of precision rifle match. So I'm going to eventually get my hands on a 6 to 30 and I'll do a review on that when we get there. But this like... The, the, the reticle is perfect for this just because it has the hard lines on the left and right and underneath so it draw, sucks your eye right to the middle. So finding the target in the reticle, is, it's very quick. Whereas some of the first focal plane optics I've used in the past, it, it's, it's, it's very convoluted in the middle and it doesn't really suck your eye to the middle that great. Whereas on a second focal plane such as this, and even the Burris XTR that I did a video on, um, I guess kind of recently, they both the reticles both just suck your eye right to the middle. Um, so when it comes to the optic, I'm definitely a huge fan of it. There's not really a whole lot to say about it because it's simple, down and dirty, just a well constructed and designed optic. Um, but tracked as a brand, they do a whole lot more than just uh, tactical scopes. They're, I would say, they're more of a hunting brand. They do binos, they do spotting scopes. Uh, all the goodness they got a ton of different hunting scopes but that's not really like my alley so I'm not terribly interested in those what really brought me to the Toric brand was I have a friend that is friends with the owner that hit me up and asked me if I'd like to dick around with the app before it was like publicly public knowledge this is a while back uh, I played around with it a lot I do think that in order for this app to be um, applicable to what you're doing you gotta you have to own a tracked optics because it's not a typical ballistic calculator where you put in your bullet information and it just spits out a, a solution for you like oh three mils for 500 yards say um, you put in your load and I'm gonna put in a picture up here what you get out you put in your your scope your reticle and then you put in your load and it spits out a reticle view for you and it gives you for the sub tensions where you have to hold over. Um, I'm going to throw in a video now real quick of me using this out to I believe 460 and 640 and I'll see you when, he, when that's over. Okay so I got 10 rounds loaded up here with a 175 grain CR match screen hand load that's with reloader 15 used to mimic a M118LR. And uh, I got two targets out there. One at six, about 640, 640, 650, somewhere between there. And then the other one around 460. And I have the dope sheet, I guess you could call it, for the holdovers, specifically for this reticle using the tracked impact app. And it gives you the holdovers for each sub tension, so you got to find one that's somewhat close to there and then give it a rip. A um, little bit of wind out there, so I'm only going to take five shots at each. And I only got 10 rounds left of this hand load, so let's see how it does. So that one, one, two, three, third sub tension. Let's see. Sub tension will hold left edge. Oh. Third sub tension hold left edge. No impact, no spot. Oh, I see it. It's 
right at the base. So it's, it looks like fourth subtension hold center. spot a splash but um, no impacts there so we're looking at the five mils a little bit higher than five mils hold over out there fortunately out there I have a backstop so we should be able to see the splash okay. let's give it a whirl Windage was good, right at the base. Oh, right under it. All right, that's a center punch. All right, that's another impact. Let's try one more. There's another impact. Now uh, looks like I got another round in there. We'll see. I think that's impact two. I got one round left. go so told me to hold it five for 635 um, I ended up holding at six for center punches and six it says 707 so it's a little off but it at least gets you pretty close and it could be ammo inconsistencies I'd be interested to see how th this would work if I got my hands on a uh, the PRS Toric or the Extreme Long Range Toric and put it on a rifle where I had really consistent ammo velocities, but it gets you close. Well, I'd say a minute a man based on uh, what it pops out here. So as you saw there, um, I believe that the issue there was more along the lines an issue with the ammo because it was hand loaded to mimic a Mark, uh, not Mark, I'm sorry, uh, M118LR ammo, which is like the military precision rifle 308. And it's essentially just a 75, oh, 175 grain CR match king in a Lake City brass with some mystery powder that gets a certain velocity um, and I did a little I put I shot this over the chronograph before I used the app and it was giving me 2660 feet per second and I don't know if that was a little high or a little low I would imagine that was a little high for what I ended up shooting and what was nice about this it gets you freaking close if not on with this optic and it's pretty cool because on on the app you can dial between since it's second focal plane not first focal plane you can dial between the magnifications where on a first focal plane the subtensions are the same thing across the board but like say the one mil hash on one x on this was like out to 1100 yards or something like that or it might have been like 2200 it was something crazy whereas the one mil hash Whereas the one mil hash on this was like 200 yards or 150 or something like that, but it was telling for the long target, the long uh, for the target that I was out at 640 or whatever it was, it might have been a little further than that where I was sitting. I didn't range it, but it's usually around 640 where I shoot from, and it was falling about a mil short, like it was falling right at the base of the target. 
but I saw the splash. So I corrected. There was a ton of wind going on out there, as you probably heard in that video, and corrected from there. And I, out of six shots, I think I made four impacts. The first two shots were corrections, and well, the first two shots was to see where the impact was. Second was a correction, went right under it. And the last four made impacts, which is um, I would I'd call that a win for the app. However, I think this with this app it would be gold if you're using it with one of the first focal plane higher magnification rounds on a gun where you're more comfortable with the ammo and you know that's going to be dialed in correctly. Uh, it worked fine for this, but again, this op this rifle, this optic isn't typically meant for making those far consistent shots. Is it capable of it? Yes. Um, is it meant for it? No. But I would call the app in combination with any of their optics, especially in some of the hunting optics, if you're out on, out shooting whatever, you range, you glass whatever your target is, whatever ammo it is, throw in your cal uh, calculations real quick. You should have it saved already. You should know your bullet velocity before going out and doing your shooting. You just pull up the reticle information with your dope, I guess it's like a dope sheet, but it's just drop data. And oh, my target's at 400 yards. There's the holdover for it, or you can dial it if you want to. Take the shot, bada boom. Who's better than you? But I think Tracked Optics is a win. Um, check out their stuff, trackedoptics.com. Check out their social medias. I believe they even have a YouTube channel. Um, I'm not getting paid for any of this stuff, but definitely worth checking it out. But yeah, man. Tracked Optics Toric, low power variable optic, one to eight. Uh, if you're looking for something in thousand and like eight hundred to twelve hundred dollar price range, I feel like this is definitely quality wise and value wise almost impossible to beat. But if you got any more questions on this, drop them in the DMs. If you got any more questions that you want to actually have a conversation on, hit me in the DMs. Otherwise, just drop in the comments. I'll usually be able to answer. Um, hopefully, you like you like the video. Let me know what you thought about the intro. Uh, let me let me know what you think about this little white background here. I got a little fancy ring light and a white background I found. Uh, literally found it. So I figured I'd give it a whirl, do a couple videos with it, see what the feedback is. But um, as always, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Subscribe here for obvious reasons. Drop comments, share, all of that fun stuff. Um, check out my Patreon. Well, su subscribe to my Patreon if you want to help out the channel. Check out Big Daddy Unlimited. Uh, as always... Thanks for watching.